What's up everyone, Darkblade here returning with another Mass Effect 3 multiplayer class guide. Today we are going to take a look at another Reckoning DLC character, the Awakened Collector Adept. This guy has the potential to be one of the highest damaging classes in the game, thanks to its passive abilities that increase its power damage. But there is a little bit of a learning curve in order to get the most out of the Awakened Collector. Now, as with all my characters, I spec them for the harder difficulties in the game. With the Awakened Collector, I put maximum points into Dark Sphere, mainly focusing at putting points into Unstable Dark Sphere over Dark Matter. Whilst Dark Matter has a big buff by increasing the damage by 100%, it does reduce the explosion size quite significantly. And Unstable Dark Sphere actually gives you free buffs to your Dark Sphere. I put points into Damage Over Time over Recharge Speed. This is simply because Damage Over Time offers two buffs, the Damage Over Time damage increase and the Duration increase. Although saying that, if you like to detonate your Dark Spheres quite often, it might be more beneficial to take Recharge Speed. Lastly, I put points into Damage over Damage Radius, simply because I want Dark Sphere to do a decent amount of damage to opponents. Now for Seeker Swarm I put maximum points into this, putting points into Swarm Count over Damage and Slow. Now Damage and Slow is good but you want the Seeker Swarms to be activating your Biotic Explosions so you need as many as you possibly can. So putting points into Swarm Count helps increase the amount of Biotic Explosions you can potentially set off. Now Damage Reduction and Damage are both viable options. If you feel that the Awakened Collector is too squishy then Damage Reduction is the obvious choice. Whereas if you want the Awakened Collector to do as much damage as it possibly can then put points into Damage. Lastly put points into Recharge Speed over Slow because the Slow effect is not all that great and there is a substantial cooldown on summoning the Seeker Swarms. Now I go into Rank 5 on Dark Channel putting points into recharge speed over slow. Both are viable but the way I'm playing at the moment I prefer recharge speed. Lastly I put points into damage over duration simply because Dark Channel already has a substantial duration time so I would like it to do decent damage on top of this. Now as for the passive abilities I generally say these are down to personal preference but with the Awakened Collector I feel it's quite important to put maximum points into Vengeful Ancient. This is because of the power damage increase in rank 6. Basically putting points into power damage all the way through this tree means your powers and biotic abilities are going to be doing a ton of damage. Through Vengeful Ancient you can increase your power damage by up to 65%. This can be increased even further through equipment and weapon mods. Lastly I put the final points into Ancient Warrior. This unlocks Ascension Mode which I'll get into in a bit. It also increases my melee slightly but most importantly it increases my health and barriers a bit. As for weaponry, I tend to favour a light weapon. This is because I want to get a quick power recharge timer. The Awakened Collector has some very powerful biotic abilities and I want him to be using these as much as possible and if I've got a heavy weapon I won't be able to do that. One thing to be aware of with the Awakened Collector is he gets a damage bonus when using Collector or Prothean weapons. Now before I get into the heart of the episode I'm going to explain to anyone who doesn't know why there is a Collector fighting against the Reapers. Basically it's all down to the Leviathan, who when in combat with the Collectors, severed their connection with Harbinger and the Reapers with a fraud device. The majority of these Collectors were wiped out, but a few of them survived and now with their minds regained, fight against the Reapers. Anyway, let's get into the heart of the episode and talk about the Awakened Collectors, moves and abilities. Its first move, a unique move, is Dark Sphere. With Dark Sphere, the Awakened Collector will launch a slow moving sphere of dark energy towards opponents. It causes damage over time to anyone who touches or passes by it. Anyone affected with the damage over time effect of Dark Sphere will be primed for a biotic explosion. For anyone who doesn't know what a biotic explosion is, it is basically when you affect an opponent with a biotic move and follow it up with a direct damaging biotic move. This will then create a biotic explosion, causing damage to the initial opponent, but not only that, it will also damage anyone around them. Biotic explosions can cause a decent amount of damage and stagger enemies, so it's well worth trying to go for them. The Dark Sphere can also be detonated manually, causing massive amounts of damage. One thing that you should know as well, that this ability only has a cooldown if you manually detonate the Dark Sphere. This gives you great options if you just want to continuously use biotic explosions against an opponent. If you don't manually detonate the Dark Sphere, it will just simply fade away, allowing you to instantly cast it again. When casting Dark Sphere, be aware that it will stick to any solid surface it touches, so you want it to stick to something that is close to the enemies you're trying to attack. 
If you're fighting approaching enemies, cast the Dark Sphere at the floor where the enemies are going to be. This way they will be affected by the damage over time effect, primed for a biotic explosion and possibly the detonation from the Dark Sphere itself. The best tactic you can use when facing multiple opponents with Dark Sphere is to cast Dark Sphere, follow that up with Dark Channel, then follow that up by causing as many biotic explosions as you possibly can with your Seeker Swarms. And before the Dark Sphere fades away, detonate it. Not many opponents will be able to survive this. Boss opponents may be, and if that is the case, you simply finish them off with weaponry. The biggest downside about Dark Sphere is that it does have a long power recharge timer when you manually detonate it. The reason for the high recharge time is because of the amount of damage the Dark Sphere can do when detonated. At the end of the day though, you have to think to yourself if it's more beneficial to detonate the Dark Sphere, thus getting a high recharge time, or let the Dark Sphere run its course and get no recharge charge timer. Now the second move and ability available to the Awakened Collector is Seeker Swarm. For this ability the Awakened Collector will summon three Seeker Swarms to cloud around him. These swarms have multiple purposes. Firstly they can be used to deal direct damage. Secondly they can be used to slow down opponents and thirdly they can be used to activate biotic explosions. There is a fourth use too. This all depends though if you put points into damage reduction in the Seeker Swarm tree. If you have then and each swarm will grant you 10% damage reduction. So by default you would have 30% damage reduction with all swarms up. If you put points into swarm count increasing the amount of swarms you can have by one then it would be 40% damage reduction. Now the Seeker Swarms work very similar to the Volus's Biotic Orbs. As in the recharge timer, the cooldown for this ability is only in effect when you first cast the Seeker Swarms to summon them. After this, the Swarms can be cast without triggering any cooldown at all. After you've cast all three or four Swarms, depending on your spec, then you will be affected with the cooldown again, as you will need to summon more Swarms. The cooldown for Seeker Swarms is quite large, so it's something to be aware of. Also, be aware that when you actually cast and summon the Seeker Swarms, you are quite vulnerable, because there's an animation the Awakened Collector goes through. During this animation, there is a chance that you'll take needless damage, so try to summon the Seeker Swarms when you're out of line of sight of an enemy. Always try to have at least a few Seeker Swarms active, as they are key in detonating biotic explosions, and this is potentially where a lot of your damage could come from. Lastly, remember that the Seeker Swarms are semi-homing, so they can arc around corners or over fences at enemies who you've got highlighted, regardless of if they're in direct line of sight or not. The third and final ability of the Awakened Collector Adept is Dark Channel. I love this damage over time move. I talked about it a lot in the N7 Fury video. The Awakened Collector will cast a biotic field on opponents. These opponents will then be plagued with persistent biotic damage. If this opponent is then killed, then the effect will transfer to another nearby enemy. Unfortunately though, you can only have one of these dark channels up at any one time. Now, as well as dark channel having a decent damage over time effect on enemies, it can be also used to set up biotic explosions. These can then be activated with Seeker Swarms or by other teammates abilities. Since the Dark Channel can transfer between multiple enemies as each enemy dies, then the potential to set off multiple biotic explosions is there, as long as you've got enough Seeker Swarms to actually activate them. Sometimes with the Awakened Collector, especially when I'm faced with single opponents, I found it more beneficial to simply cast Dark Channel, follow that up with a Seeker Swarm and rinse and repeat instead of trying to get a Dark Sphere into the right position. Now the rotation I mentioned earlier on in the video, the cast Dark Sphere, follow that up with Dark Channel, follow that up with Seeker Swarms, then follow that up with the manual Dark Sphere detonation. The reason I cast Dark Channel before any biotic explosions are activated is simply because after the manual explosion of the Dark Sphere, if any opponent is left alive, as long as it's not the one you initially cast the Dark Channel on, then another opponent will be affected with the effects of Dark Channel and thus primed for biotic explosions. If you have any Seeker Swarms left, continue to throw these Seeker Swarms at that opponent to create more biotic explosions whilst your cooldown timer recharges. It does take a bit of getting used to this whole rotation, but once you master it, you will be doing a lot of damage. Now with the Awakened Collector's passive abilities, with Vengeful Ancient, I always try to put maximum points into this, because the amount of power damage increase you can get from this tree is quite substantial. It's one of the highest in the game, so having points in this means that all your biotic abilities will be doing more damage. 
Lastly, there's Ancient Warrior. I put a few points into this, mainly to increase my health and barrier, but it also unlocks Ascension Mode. Ascension Mode is activated when the Awakened Collector uses his Heavy Melee. When first activated, anyone who's near the Awakened Collector will take damage from the Blast Radius, but the Awakened Collector will land in Ascension Stance. Whilst in Ascension Stance, the Awakened Collector's damage output is increased, also his power recharge timer is decreased, but as a consequence he'll take more damage. The Ascension Stance will last for a short time, which is both good and bad. For example, if you're in no danger of taking any damage at all, then the Ascension Stance is actually quite good. But on the most part, Ascension Stance is not the most useful because you're always in danger of taking damage somehow. And with Ascension Stance on, you're even more squishier than you normally are. You can invest more points into the Ancient Warrior tree to try to increase the amount of damage you can get from Ascension Stance and its usefulness. But at this point in time and the way it's implemented into the game, I don't think it's really worth it. Lastly, the Awakened Collector as a race is a collector. It's new to the series, we haven't seen one before. His light melee ability is called a Vengeful Strike. Basically, the Awakened Collector will charge at biotic powers for a brief second and then unleash it in sort of a force push move, damaging multiple opponents in front of him. It also has quite a far reach. Now, I've already talked about the heavy melee as it's to do with the Ascension Stance. As for the Awakened Collector's dodge mechanics, these are referred to as Four Wing Leap. Basically, small wings sprout out from the Awakened Collector's back, allowing him to travel short distances. These work pretty much in the same way as the Turian Ghost, Turian Havoc and Turian Saboteur's propulsion packs. Four Wing Leap means that the Awakened Collector can easily avoid incoming attacks. The Awakened Collector comes with a similar amount of health and barriers to the humans, although saying that its barrier is slightly above what the human classes would get. Overall, the Awakened Collector has possibly some of the most powerful biotic attacks in the game, but to compensate for this, Bioware have given him a long cooldown rate on his abilities. But once you master a decent rotation with his abilities, you'll soon be doing a lot of damage with this guy. I really enjoy playing as this class, and at the moment he's my favourite Reckoning DLC character. Anyway, I've been Dartblade bringing you my Mass Effect 3 multiplayer class guide to the Awakened Collector Adept. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.